Hello everyone, my name is Layo Charles and this is the Ugandan Farmer. Today I am right here with Mr. Arthur who is the owner of Large Makes Farm Noya. Today we are talking about God's farming. What do you need to know as a beginner, as someone who is thinking of venturing into God's farming? Arthur is actually a very experienced farmer. He's also doing God's farming, as you can see right here. So we want to hear from him what you need to know, beginner's guide to God's farming. Arthur, you're most welcome. You can tell us about yourself. Then we talk about God's farming and your journey. Okay, thank you so much. I'm called Arthur, Nathan Kubito, and I'm here at Lad Mix Farm. We are based in Moya. And currently, we are talking about uh, goat farming. Thank you. Yeah. yeah. Mm. Well, that's great. Mm. There's a lot of people who are interested in goat farming right now in 2023. Mm. I've even personally had people reach out to me that I should make a video about this. Mm. So let's talk about your journey. Mm. You know, when did you start doing goat farming and how has the journey been so far for you? Okay. Uh, this is uh, the second year. Mm. Uh, when I'm into good farming, yeah. Um, but it is something I started the, uh, last year. Mm. But the challenge uh, was about identifying the animals oh, uh, because okay. I wanted to start with a, a number, say 50 animals, yeah. but local animals. Mm. But it was very, very hard to get, uh, get the, the animals because I remember reaching out to a number of people to guide me yeah, to yeah. some of the farms that have animals yes. in northern Uganda. But it was very hard to go to a particular farm where you can get like 30 or 50 animals at a go. Okay. Okay. And yeah. that was a very big challenge. Yeah. I ended up sourcing some of the animals within, but others had to go past Karuma to be able to identify these animals. But were they local as you wanted? Yes, they were local because I didn't have a big budget, so I decided mm. to go with the local ones. Okay. But in so doing, be able to introduce um, a, a pure he goat, a yeah. boar and then be able to start the breeding process from there. Mm. Mm. So that's what I was able to do. Yeah. Yes, please. Oh, that, that's amazing. Mm. Uh, as someone who wants to start God's farming in 2023, mm. or you've been doing it in uh, it's, uh, two years now, mm. why God's farming? Okay, God's farming, if you notice, uh, the demand is just so much. Mm. Uh, just take an example of goat meat in the market, go and ask. Yeah. You realize that it is 15,000 mm. a kilogram, yeah. but that's in Gulu. In, in Kampala, it's way, way much more. Oh, and if okay. you go to even supermarkets and these uh, class areas, it's mm. even beyond 20,000, oh, just a wow. kilogram, yeah. uh, compared to, say, beef or mm. any other animal. Yeah. So you realize mm. that the demand is just too much, mm. both within Uganda, yeah. but also in the region and internationally. Yeah. Whether you want to eat goat, uh, well, you want to get goat uh, for, 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 for eating, buying mm. slaughtered animal, expensive. Whether you want to access goats yeah. to start as a breeder, that one is even more more expensive because of course they'll sell to you as a breeder yeah, yeah but we don't have significant numbers for members out there i keep on getting calls people and they're saying i would like to buy some goats okay. i always tell them that we are just beginning mm. and we don't have those numbers that we can be able to turn out yeah so uh it's because i realized that first of all it's a very lucrative business and relatively much easier to manage compared to crop farming. Mm. Because if you have 200 goats, one hard person can be able to look after them if you fence off. Yeah. Which is different from when you're, say, cultivating, say, four or five acres, mm. you'll need a number of people. Yeah. With goat farming, whether it is too much rainfall, whether it's too prolonged sunshine, the goats will be there provided they have the uh, access to water and pastures. Yeah. But when you come to the crop beets, then they'll tell you, ah, we are not able to harvest because either the rain was too much yeah. or the sunshine was excessive. Yes. Yes. Uh, so now that's why you find that when you are choosing between crop and animal, I would encourage you to go for animal. Oh, it's okay. way, way much better. Okay. And particularly goats, because yeah. that's what I'm dealing in now. Yeah. But, well, that also brings me to my next question. You've been doing goat farming for two years. Mm. Uh, how many goats do you have right here? Um, we started with around. We have around the. We have around eighty. Oh, okay. Uh, around eighty goats. And you started with fifty or thirty? Yes, I started with the. No, I started with fifty. Mm. Now the challenge was. Yeah. Uh, I went and identified a he goat. Now you realize that in most of these, because I bought local goats, but I wanted to bring in um, a pure you know, hybrid uh, mm, boa goat yeah. to 
develop um, the genetics of these particular animals. Yeah, yeah. By the time you bring that one, once it's met the local ones, then it will give you 50% boa oh, oh, and you okay. keep on improving your herd. Yeah. The more you improve on the herd, the more income it starts, you know, uh, earning. Mm. So, in that sense, I was able to identify a uh, higo to bring on the farm. But you realize the higo I brought was not as active oh. in terms of, uh, you know, uh, mating with the females mm. uh, because particularly where it was yeah. on the other farm yeah. uh, these breeders who have uh, prominent farms and big an numbers yeah you will find that if they have very good genetics say he goats they isolate them and graze them alone as a batch of he goats because mm. they don't want in breeding whereby the the son comes to mate with the sister or the mother you know yeah. so now they skip them separate but in so doing these animals tend to be a little bit docile. Oh, okay, they are not. Yeah. Uh, they are good. They can perform, but it will take them time. Mm. So you find I got a, a, a goat from such a farm, very good breed. Mm. But the, when I expected that it would be able to mount some of these goats, it was quite slow. Yeah. And uh, I lost quite a lot of time because out of the fifth, I think it was able to mate around the seven or eight, and yet there were many on hit. Yeah. But it was just a non-performer. And because also it, I didn't have a second back in there, mm. and so there was no competition. Oh, okay. okay? Yeah. So now that means I had to remove uh, the higots after three months because for me I use the natural synchronization approach. Oh, okay. Natural synchronization is where you bring in the higots at a particular time. You want the females to be mated at the same time, at the same period. Mm. So you remove the back and graze it alone. Okay. When it is time for, and you notice that I've given birth, you want these females to, to you know, uh, come on heat and start, you know, mm. uh, conceiving, you introduce a period, a, a higot into the herd for a specific uh, period of time. Yes. So after losing three months and getting only three, I mean eight cases, mm. and out of the eight, I also got some other challenges, some which were sick, I ended up having around only five that gave birth. Uh, so that whole season was kind of wasted yeah so i had to keep the box off and wait for another phase mm. when these ones have given birth mm. and they reintroduce uh, because you plan it in such a way that your goats can conceive and give birth twice in 13 months yeah so that was the unfortunate bit so the second round i was able to introduce mm. uh, the back plus also getting another second one to create a little bit of comp um, competition yeah. and that's when now this he got performed very well. The one which was a little bit lazy at the start, even when I introduced the second Higot, it became the master Higot. Now it was oh. very, very aggressive and active, and there was that competition. Mm. And so we were able to get uh, quite a number of kids during the second round. Yeah. And so we are at that level where we just need to keep on monitoring mm. and be able to, you know, uh, grow the numbers uh, yeah. over time. Yeah. Yes. Oh, okay. Well, that, that's that's great. Mm. And I, it has been a learning process. I believe by now you have learned a lot. Now yes. you, you're doing the right thing. Exactly. Yeah. Mm. Oh, okay, that, that's really good. Mm. Because from that, you know, once you start this, I was very passionate. I came in with a lot of zeal, mm. but had those challenges that yes. were really bothering me. Yes. And so I was able, you know, to document this and share it to some people. Some people have always wanted to come and I tell them, no, yeah. I've not reached the point of welcoming people in the farm yet. Yeah. We are still uh, setting up, as you can see. Uh -huh. It's really basic. Yes, okay. Yes, yes. So this one has to wait until we, we, we grow the numbers. Mm. But for those that want to find out more information, I've got, the, as I told you, mm. uh, the YouTube channel, Admix Farm. Yeah. We've talked extensively about, about goats plus other things. Exactly. They can be able. Yeah. But I can still elaborate more. Mm. Uh, for instance, in when we were bringing in these uh, he goats. Mm. Remember, these are local breeds. Some of them are not as big. Yes, yes. But because you have a, a pure boar he goat, and when it would mount, some of these goats had small wombs and were not of that size mm. enough mm. to carry the womb. Yeah. So we had challenges of cases of abortion because it could simply not handle. Mm. You know, once you look at them when they're giving birth, the babies can be very big. Mm. Okay? Yeah. So that one was uh, quite another challenge. Then we also had a challenge of um, uh, ORF. Uh, this is when goats develop sores oh. along uh, the mouth. Yeah. And as it has sores, 
if it also starts breastfeeding on the mother the breast develops also as you find the mother doesn't want to breastfeed it was a big problem for us here uh, then the other challenge of course as i told you i got some animals from across yes, uh, karuma yes. when i brought them in the environment was completely different oh, yeah, so there was true. a lot of cough and flu true. even after providing the medication it was kind of chronic mm. i had to bring in an expert vet who really came and really did something tremendous and who were able you know uh, to close that chapter mm. but goat farming is a very very lovely enterprise very nice especially if you're passionate about it yeah, yeah. but it has its own challenges which are manageable because yeah. why i encourage people why i started with the first of all with the local goats mm. i didn't have that budget to yeah. start with uh, the cross breed because you find you either have to part with 500,000 or 800,000 mm. per female goat Wow. and which was quite expensive yes. so i had to go for the local ones yeah. and then introduce uh, the he goats but again the beauty with this process is that it gives you uh, an opportunity uh, to go through a learning curve mm. because these pure breeds once you have them yeah you really have to be very good at your game otherwise you'll end up losing a lot of animals oh. so once they are here and the we kind of monitor on how they are behaving the structure whether it is adequate why is it coughing all of a sudden yet mm. you have dewormed it yeah. so you keep on observing and see how you can be able to improve on the yeah. performance of these ones yeah. and so it becomes good because so far here at least you have the 50% uh, goat kids mm -hmm. some of the mothers are 50% uh, but they were sold to me as local goats and so forth mm. so it's important as we journey to start doing the record keeping and get to know how these animals you know are yeah. progressing and be able to uh, able to produce quality goats because here mm. our aim is to do goats for meat production oh. but meat production as breeders yes. we want to be breeders whereby in the future we can sell to you goats mm. if you're out there and you want to be able to access or if you want to start goat farming yeah but goats that you're going to rear for purposes of selling out as what as for meat production yes, yes. because there are those who do it for uh for for milk production yeah which is a different case oh, okay yes now as someone who is watching us right now mm. may be wanting to start god's farming mm. and then one of the big question may be i know there are different types of gods like yes. you have said we have the local ones maybe mm. the crossbreed something like that yes um uh, you decided to go for local one. Yes. Uh, you know, why did you decide to go for local one and maybe what are some of the types that someone should choose when they want to venture into God's farming? Okay. <laughs> Thank you so much, Charles. <clears throat> one, it's because I didn't have enough money. I would have gone for the uh, a, a blood percent of the hybrids of, uh, up to a certain level yeah. to start from there. Yeah. Because when you start with goods that uh of improved uh blood mm. say 50 percent or 75 percent yeah when they give birth to young ones yeah first of all those young ones grow very fast because oh, okay. those young ones once they eat the pasture they have the high conversion you know rate or yeah. ratio yeah. of the pasture mm -hmm. uh, so you find that a goat uh a 50 percent uh, goat bloodline mm -hmm. will grow quite fast faster than one which is purely local ah, okay. bred by a local he goat yes. but if this 50 percent also got a 100 percent poor back and it makes it mm. it will be able to produce a goat which is 75 percent bloodline ah, that okay. one also grows way way faster than the 50 percent mm. so when you are starting with goats depending on what your uh, your financial capacity yes, is yes. if you want to you know go into the league of making money faster mm. i encourage you to go with, for goats that of a certain uh, blood percentage yeah. it will affect you uh, budget wise but at the same time once you start selling mm. you are able to recoup uh, this money very fast yeah. because i think a 50 percent goes for around 400,000 if you are a single oh, goat okay. when you're selling yeah. to a breeder yes, yes and then if it is 75 uh, percent goes up to around 800,000 oh, a single goat yeah, yeah. so there if you're there and you want to grow animals for breeding mm. then i prefer if you have the money yeah. go for the improved breed okay. if you don't have the money yeah. just go for the local breed yeah. and be able to uh, improve over mm. time mm. but also the local breeds gives you uh, the opportunity yeah. uh, to, to 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 study and understand the animals yeah. now there are two types uh, or approaches when you're doing uh, 
uh, good fun. Yeah. If you are going to do free range, just like we are doing, uh, then um, even when you start with the local uh, breeds, yeah. you are good to go because you are not going to be bothered about harvesting, storing, managing the pastures. Mm, you yeah. just release because remember the local ones have lower uh, conversion rate of the of the pastures. Yeah, exactly. that's why they are slow to grow and so forth. Yeah. So, but if you are going to go for zero grazing, mm. I wouldn't advise you to go for uh, local goats because, oh. as I told you, they take long forever to grow. Yeah. Even if you are improving, yes, I would prefer you start with the goats that are either 75 percent bloodline uh, and then yeah. introduce 100 percent he goat. Yes, yeah. They will give birth to an 87 point something, you know. Uh, uh, offspring, yeah. that one will grow very fast. Mm. You really see when you come back after a month and you look at it when it is actually growing. Mm. After say eight to nine months, yeah. it will be as big as almost as the mother and you can be able to sell it off. Oh, okay. And you can sell it off quite highly. Yeah. I told you so above 600,000 a single goal. Yeah, so good. you realize that if you are doing zero grazing, if you have the money, go for this. Uh, hybrid, the improved one yeah. for zero grazing. Uh -huh. If you don't have even zero grazing, uh, uh, it's not going to be very good for you. I wouldn't encourage you. I would encourage you to fast save. There's no way you should start uh, good farming on zero grazing and you want to start with local. Mm. You uh, That will be showing uh, some level of unseriousness. Yeah, yeah. Now, uh, but if you have free range and you still want to do uh, improved uh, version of goats, mm. that's even better. Oh, uh, okay. Because then you can be able to straight away uh, rear them but yeah. for those ones you would i would encourage you to s at least put up a raised goat structure mm. because then they'll not slip down they'll not have challenges of uh, access to all these you know, environment that may be a problem in terms of uh providing jams and so mm. forth that's for the hybrid one yeah for the hybrid ones okay, okay. even the local ones if you can but yeah. of course for them you know they are hardy yes. they are more strong yeah even us as we try here okay. we hope to improve our structures, as you yeah. see, this is a um, kind of a makeshift, but it serves the purpose. Mm, yeah. What is important, yeah. shelter your goats from strong winds yes. and rainfall. Oh, the rest, okay. they will stay well, yeah. provided you clean the place every day. As you can see, the place is hygienic. Yeah, yeah, we try is. to it make is. sure that we sweep. Uh -huh. And so that is it. Yeah. So those are, but in the among the local ones, we have the um, Kigezi uh, mm. breed. Yeah. We have the Mugende. Yes. Uh, breed, and then we have the small East African goats. Yeah. So now the Kigezi ones, you find they normally have feathers around mm, yeah. uh, behind here and yeah. on the back. Yeah. Then you just know that is a Kigezi breed. Mm. Uh, the Mubende, they normally have, they're normally black or black and white and shiny, you know, coat. Mm. And uh, they can be quite of a big size ah, and okay. can be very good. Yeah. The small East African, as you know, it's a small East African goat, local, but also small. Yeah. They take forever to grow. Yeah, I yeah. it wouldn't be good. And if you're at cross and you bring a hybrid and you want to introduce mm. a small East African goat, then it's going to be a challenge. Yeah. It will even fail to push uh, the baby even when it is well grown because oh, it is of a small size. Okay, okay. But among the the improved uh, goats, mm. uh, we have uh, the, the, the hybrids. We have the Boa goat, yeah. which is my favorite. And then we have the Kalahari. Mm. I also hope to in, have some Kalaharis in future yeah. uh, by introducing a buck or two. Mm. And then we have the Savannah. Mm. The boar normally is white and then a brown head. Uh, grows very fast. Mm. Uh, very good, uh, good high f uh, grass conversion yeah. uh, rate. Uh, the same applies to uh, the red Kalahari. The red Kalahari is just basically brown, the whole of it. But its features and physical and, and characteristics are that like that of a boar. Then we have the savannah. The savannah is generally white. Mm. And it also grows well, very well like the other three. Only that for it, when it comes to the male, it has a very high libido. Mm. you find that oh, a, male, okay. a, a male can be able to serve 50 goats. Oh, wow. But uh, for the boa and the, and the red karahali, those ones go for maybe 30 females. Mm. You see? Yeah. yeah, but in terms of growth rate and so forth, they all perform well. Mm. And so you can be able to choose and say whether you want to try all, all the three yeah. or you want to start with one breed over the other. Yeah. For me, I'm just, uh, I just like the boa. Uh -huh. That's why I went for it. Yeah. But I also want to bring in the red Kalahari mm. in the future when funds, you know, allow. Yeah. And then take it on from there. Yeah. Yes, please. Let, let's talk a bit about your structure. I mm. see you have a simple structure, but it's doing its purpose. Yeah. 
Um, and I'm also seeing you've installed some tires in, mm. the, in the compound where the the goats are. Mm. This might be a tips for someone who is doing goats farming or someone who went, who wants to enter. Mm. Uh, why why do you have those tires you know ah. inside there okay thank you so much now these tires actually serve uh, several purposes mm. first uh, you know goats don't like wet ground they like being high oh, naturally yeah. even when it is hot or what they just want if there is an anthill yeah. it would be very good for you to construct a, a, a you know a structure and fence off the, this we call actually an exercising yard. Oh, oh, so if okay. you can have an exercising yard that has an anthill, that is the best. Yeah. Because goats naturally like being on top and so forth. Mm. So when it is wet and it has rained, we find them having a tendency of uh, going onto the tires mm. to avoid their feet touching the gr- wet ground. Yeah. But as you can see, they also use it to scratch themselves yeah. when they are uh, rubbing I themselves. <laughs> and then, most importantly, the young ones uh-huh. like playing mm. uh, on the tires, jumping, yeah. running around. Yeah. So it f- provides them th- that sort of, you know, uh, exercise, mm. uh, you know, ability to do them, that exercise. Yeah. But you place them and distribute them within the exercising yard and they'll be able to, mm. you know, reside there. Yeah. Uh, for the structure, we had to go by what our fans could afford. Yes. And we tried to do uh, what we did. And if you notice, I tried to put some stones in there mm. uh, yeah. so that, you know, when it rains, they'll all converge in there. Yes. And remember, as they converge in, they're defecating, they're urinating. Uh, the place can have a little bit of ammonia, mm. uh, that mm. smell that comes from the ground. Uh, because of the congestion, the concentration there. Yeah. So it's always advised that when you're building a good structure, mm. say if you're going to have 200 goats and you've built a good structure of 200 goats, uh, make sure that the exercising yard is double oh, the size okay. of the structure. Yes, yes. Because they'll get out and be able to exercise, as ah, you can see. Can, so, yeah. when, yes, so remember, when they enter, it mm. will be a little bit... Uh, squeezed up yeah. because that's how it's going to be. Yeah. But when they get out, they are able to move freely. Uh-huh. They will not knock themselves uh, anyhow mm. and can be able to what? Uh, uh, to feel more comfortable. Mm. And that's how we've done it. Uh, mm. That's why we've done it like this. Okay. Yes, please. I think this is quite amazing because I saw mm. when when the rain was coming, mm. they all entered inside. Uh-huh. <laughs> no one even pushed them. No, they no, no. no. They'll just move in. Whether it's night or day, yeah. they'll just find themselves uh, moving there. Okay. But at night, yeah. When it is not rainy, you will not see a goat inside. They will just come and they will want to be watched. Oh, at, okay. Yes, wow. whether it's night wow. or day, <laughs> naturally they yeah. just being like being free and yeah. outside and they will yeah. just be able to so reside you, there. So you need to have the shelter, then you need to have the playing ground for them. Also. Yes, okay. exactly. The exercising ground. Exactly. Okay. Okay. Very, very key. Wow, that, that's, that's really good. Mm. Now, as we try to conclude, mm. um, if you were to give some one advice to someone who wants to start god farming or someone who is thinking of doing god farming Mm. what would you say to that person who is watching us right now okay uh thank you so much um people out there think uh, or are always bothered by how they should go about to start Mm. my advice is start with what you have you don't have to first wait and accumulate the money. Mm. If you can start with 10 goats or 5 goats, just put them there. Yeah. Once you start, you start getting inspired on what you can do next. Mm-hmm. Now, if you get to another salary and you feel you can add 1 or 2, 3 goats, just add them there. Yeah. You see? Yeah. Secondly, as you start your goats, please don't buy goats from anywhere. Try to reach out to these homesteads that have, because I may not tell you a farm, mm. there are not so many places that we can go and buy goats at once, mm. but there are these homesteads that have goats. Yeah. You go inquire whether they can sell you one or two and keep on buying from some of these homesteads. Yeah. Don't go to the marketplace. You are going to bring a goat which is diseased oh. and you'll end up affecting the go- few goats that yeah. have. Remember, you're struggling with the little resources and you want to make sure that you're not you know, doing it wrong. Mm. So don't go to the marketplace. Just go to any homestead and inquire whether you can buy some goats and start from there. Mm. And then try to grow the numbers. Don't think of a, a fancy structure. As you can see, this is a nine sheet structure, but it is serving the purpose. Mm. Invest, invest most of your money to accumulate the numbers. And then eventually when you feel you're somewhere, yeah. then you can think of building a raised structure 
and then continue your journey. Mm. But goat farming is definitely a very interesting enterprise, and I really urge everybody out there, whether you are a prospective farmer, or you're already engaged in farming, or you are thinking of what to do, mm. I can guarantee you that goat farming is a very good venture mm. uh, to go into. Yeah. Yes, please. Oh, that's really good. Mm. If you're watching this, as is actually a very experienced goat <laughs> farmer, He's also doing a pineapple, chili, quite a lot right here. Mm. You can do consultation with him and uh, he's having a YouTube channel. Just go search for Lad Mix Farm, then you'll learn a lot of things about goat farming. Mm. And I'll leave the link to the channel in the description of this video. Our last question for today. Mm. Is goat farming a profitable business to do in Uganda? <laughs> <laughs> goat farming is actually very, very uh, profitable. Yeah. The only challenge is that when you're having it and you're selling your animals, yeah. especially those which are going to be for meat, there is a tendency of selling it to these middlemen who just come and start bargaining oh, yeah. and want to. Uh -huh. Yeah, but currently there are even efforts of farmers wanting to come together, form associations, mm. and be able to sell numbers and there are those who want to be able to get farmers who can sell huge you know numbers of yeah. goats if you have like 100 or 200 uh -huh. whereby they can come and buy them off once or they come and slaughter from premises and be able to package this meat mm. to go to the middle east or elsewhere yeah so goat farming is very lucrative it has a lot of resources mm. you can be able to earn money from various levels yeah. you can decide to be a breeder as I told you to uh -huh. sell to others, yes. you can decide that for those that you're not going to do as a breeder, why not sell them as a, a you know, start off a point, a meat point where you slaughter and add value to your animal. Mm. Yep, sell in cages. Yes. Or if you can have an eatery, you can imagine yeah. a kilogram goes for 15,000. Yeah. So if you add value, you realize that you'll be able to sell it quite um, expensively. Mm. But in terms of demand, you cannot have goats there and you say that you're failing to get somebody to buy them. Mm, yes. You will only fail to satisfy the market, yes. but you will not fail to get the market for the oh, goats. Okay. Yes. Yeah. Mm. Oh, I, th I think th those are really great things that someone should learn. Yes. You know, I, I knew that God is survived demand uh, some few years ago. It was towards festive season, you okay. know, this Christmas, New Year, mm. and someone, a friend, wanted a god. I moved, I moved through different, <laughs> different, <laughs> yes, different villages. I could not get. Yes, and the one that was available, they were selling it very expensive. Very expensive. So I think uh, goat farming is actually a very profitable business mm. and a uh, very good venture, mm. and it's good having you here. Uh, it's also good having you watching this. I hope you've learned a lot. My mm. name is Laio Charles. And of course, this is the Ugandan farmer. We are bringing to you the stories of Ugandan who are into farming and agriculture. Mm. I hope to see you in our very next video. Thank you for watching. Thank you.